In this module, look, we will look at the features of autosomal recessive disorders and X-linked disorders. So, first of all, let's look at the features of autosomal recessive disorders manifested in homozygous state. We already know what that means. Parents of an affected person are usually not affected. However, the probability that this particular disease or trait will appear in the siblings of that person is 1 in 4 or 25%. Affected individuals may be product of consanguineous marriage. Uh, I have already introduced this term to you. So if a gene is rare in the population and a person is affected by that uh, or is carrier of that particular gene, the probability is very high. We are talking about recessive disorders. So both the copies of the gene have to come together. Same copies of the gene, defected gene have to come together. So that probability is that that particular person is product of consanguineous marriage or two cousins or two close relatives marrying and that would be one of the cases one of the instances that this rare gene two copies of this rare gene can come in a single person expression of the defect is more uniform autosomal recessive disorders don't have reduced penetrance or variable expressivity most of the time, the autosomal recessive disorders result from mutation or change in enzyme proteins, genes coding for enzymes. The reason is we have two copies of gene. We have a paternal copy and a maternal copy. So if one copy, one of those copies is mutated or is changed or is defective, defected allele, it is okay because the normal copy will compensate for the defective copy. As we have already talked, enzymes are very potent catalysts. So even if half the population of enzyme is not normal, is abnormal, the, the normal enzyme population can, can mask the effect of abnormal enzyme. I didn't mention when I was talking about autosomal dominant disorders. Autosomal dominant disorders are generally caused by mutation or changes in genes which are coding for regulatory proteins or structural proteins with multiple subunits. To understand this, uh, we have to talk about uh, other concepts which are sort of beyond the scope of uh, this course. So uh, maybe in a future course, we can talk about that. Here, now we have a pedigree of an autosomal recessive disorder. As you can see, our affected individual right here, the parents are normal. However, they are carrying the defected allele, but they themselves are normal. And here is consanguineous marriage shown by double line. This is between because this marriage or this mating is between two cousins. So here's an example of autosomal recessive disorders. You can contrast this pedigree with the pedigree showing the autosomal dominant disorder. So how does mutation in enzymes cause a disease? There are two ways, two mechanisms. First of all, we know that our metabolism is organized in, in such a way that end product of an enzyme or the product of an enzyme is substrate of the next enzyme in the subsequent step. So here we have a product. Let's say that enzyme, there's a mutation in enzyme 3 both copies of enzyme 3 are defective. Both alleles of enzyme 3 are defective. So it cannot convert intermediate 2 into the product. So one of the ways it will cause defect is that product would probably be an essential protein that is required for the cell. So now cells don't have access to the product and cells need this product to function normally. So that would result in compromised cell activity or cell or a disease. The other reason why enzyme mutations can cause the disease is please note that this product is basically inhibiting the enzyme number one. This is the commitment step in this process. Once enzyme one converts substrate into intermediate one, this, this process has to follow. Because if this doesn't follow, the intermediates here one and two, they can go to the site metabolic pathways and result in toxic byproducts. 
these toxic byproducts can also result in injury cell injury and disease so two mechanisms one absence of the product which is required by the cell and number two production of toxic material from the intermediates they when they're converted into toxic material they can cause injury too now let's look at a specific example of autosomal recessive disorder generally people think that genetic disorders cannot be cured or cannot be contained cannot be managed there are certain genetic disorders that can be and phenylketonuria an autosomal recessive disorder is one of those in phenylketonuria it is characterized by deficiency of an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase or PAH abbreviated this enzyme is necessary to metabolize amino acid phenylalanine into amino acid tyrosine tyrosine is also used by the body to manufacture pigments melanin which gives us color our skin our color so when this enzyme is deficient phenylalanine accumulates as we've talked about phenylalanine when it gets it, it accumulates it can get shunted or forced into side metabolic pathways that can result in production of phenyl ketones these phenyl ketones are excreted in urine and children babies carrying this particular form of gene this allele their urine has a specific peculiar smell and of course they will be very very fair and it this phenyl ketone can also cause mental retardation so the simple solution for this problem for this genetic problem would be so if we can give these patients these children from very early on during uh, as soon as soon they are born if we restrict their diet we don't give them phenylalanine in excess quantity we limit the quantity of phenylalanine intake and give them tyrosine in their diet this will prevent the phenyl ketones from forming so phenyl ketones will not be able to cause mental retardation and if we supplement their diet with tyrosine that can be converted into the pigment so these people suffering these people who have both the copies both their genes both alleles have a defected phenylalanine pah gene uh, mutated or changed or defective gene for pah they can be basically managed and they grow up to be normal babies so this disease can basically be managed with managing with modulating the diet of the baby so i have just given you an example of autosomal recessive disorder and also one of the few genetic disorders that can be completely managed people who are suffering from this disease or because they have two copies of the gene that are both mutated or are unable to make a normal protein we, which can be managed next we will look at the autosomal uh, sorry sex linked recessive disorders